After suffering through the agony of that one damn guy in your truck singing along to his awful music he's blasting through his mic, Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. And nearly getting stuck in a tiny ditch. Oh, oh shit. No. Your truck finally manages to reach the strong point. You jump out of that truck just as an enemy rocket slams into it, narrowly escaping a quick and violent death. Holy shit! Your team spreads out and starts engaging the enemy. As you scramble to hold the line, you suddenly hear the horrifying sound of incoming artillery shells. Your teammates are being obliterated left and right. New guys in the corner puking his guts out. But before you can take a single step, there's a huge blast. Your screen goes black and the words killed in action appear. You hit the space bar to redeploy and that's when you realize the only place for your team to spawn is all the way back at HQ and the enemy is already capturing the strong point. Just a few minutes into the match and your team is already screwed. How did this happen? How could this have been avoided? Insert garrisons and outposts. An outpost is a spawn point that your squad leader can put down, which allows your squad to spawn in on it in 20 second increments. Think of it like a train that leaves the station every 20 seconds. If you miss that train, you'll have to wait 20 seconds for the next one. Other squads cannot spawn on your outpost, and you can't spawn on theirs. Outposts don't require any supplies to build, and they can be placed anywhere in the blue, friendly controlled territory, as well as the tan, neutral territory. In the warfare game mode, outposts can also be placed up to two grid squares deep in the red, enemy controlled territory. The only exception to this rule is recon squad leaders, also known as spotters, who can place outposts as far behind enemy lines as they please. In the offensive game mode, the team that's defending cannot enter or place outposts in the enemy controlled territory at all, and the team that's attacking can only enter and place outposts two grid squares deep into enemy territory. The attacking team's recon squad is able to enter and place outposts up to four grid squares deep, but no further. So until the attacking team captures the first three sectors, their recon squad will not be able to take out artillery since they can only go four grid squares deep into enemy territory. A squad leader can have a single outpost down at a time. Once they place an outpost, they'll have to wait 120 seconds before they can place a new one down, which will replace the previous one. However, the squad leader can dismantle their outpost by holding the F key next to it, which then eliminates the cooldown time and allows them to place a new outpost immediately. If the enemy comes within 10 meters of your outpost, it will be dismantled. Outposts can be destroyed by grenades, rockets, tank shells, artillery, bombing runs, Katyusha strikes, satchels, and precision strikes. And if the enemy team captures the territory your outpost is built in, it will automatically be dismantled. Here's a look at the US outpost. Here's a look at the German outpost. And here's a look at the Soviet outpost. Radio chatter can be heard coming from the U.S. and German outposts when nearby. This is Hot Dog 7. Target. Fire for attacks. Over. And Morse code can be heard from the Soviet outpost. To build an outpost, equip your watch and then hold the right mouse button. An opaque blueprint will appear which you can move around. Once it turns green, you can place the outpost by holding the left mouse button for a couple of seconds. Outposts are represented on the map by a triangle with an antenna on top. In friendly territory, if an enemy soldier gets within 50 meters of your outpost, a small red triangle with an exclamation point in the middle will show up in the middle of this icon, indicating the enemy's presence. So if you notice your squad's outpost icon is turned red, the enemy Enemy is close and you should try to find them and kill them before they dismantle it. Alright guys, next we're going to talk about what's probably the single most important thing in the game, garrisons. But before we dive into that, if you're finding this video useful so far, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and if you're interested in more content like this, subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Alright, let's talk Garys, huh? Garrisons or Garys are spawn points that can be deployed on every 40 seconds, and where outposts can only be used by the squad they belong to, garrisons can be used by the entire team. Only the commander and squad leaders can build garrisons, and they require supplies to be built. In the blue friendly controlled sectors, garrisons cost 50 supplies to build, and in the red enemy controlled sectors, they cost 100 supplies to build. Garrisons cannot be built in the tan neutral territory. Each team can have a maximum of 8 garrisons at a time and this should always be your goal. 
If need be, garrisons can be dismantled to allow for new garrisons to be built if you hit your team limit. This can be done by squad leaders or the commander by holding the F key while next to the garrison. The commander can also dismantle a garrison instantly and remotely by using the dismantle garrison ability, but it costs 100 manpower, so it's honestly a bit wasteful since he can always just redeploy on the garrison he wants to dismantle and do it by hand without using any manpower. If you want to learn more about the various commander abilities, check out my ultimate commander guide video linked down in the video description. Each faction's garrison looks a little different, but they all consist of a small table with various items on and around them. The US garrison's most notable features are a large suitcase sitting next to the table and a folding chair next to it. The German garrison's most notable features are the large gas cans underneath them and the various tin cans sitting on top. And the Soviet garrison's main feature is the radio on top of the table and of course the bucket underneath the table that they use to catch the bullets they dig out of their fallen comrades you know, to reuse them. The same radio chatter emitted by the outpost can be heard when near a garrison. The process of building a garrison is pretty much the same as building an outpost. As a squad leader or commander, equip your watch, but this time scroll your mouse wheel to switch from an outpost blueprint to a garrison blueprint. Once it turns green, hold the left mouse button for a couple seconds to build the garrison. But in order to build a garrison, you need to be within 50 meters of the required amount of supplies, so a little bit of forethought and planning is required here. Garrisons are represented on the map by a circle with a triangular flag. In blue friendly controlled territory, if an enemy soldier gets within 50 meters of your garrison, a small triangle with an exclamation point will appear, just like with the OPs. You can actually take advantage of this by building multiple garrisons surrounding the strong point you're defending. When enemies get within 50 meters of any of these garrisons, the exclamation points that show up will alert you to their presence. And this will give you a rough idea of where the enemy is attacking from, which can give you an edge when defending. Be aware that if an enemy gets within 15 meters of your garrison in blue friendly controlled territory, it will actually become locked and your team won't be able to deploy on it until the enemy is either killed or leaves the area. Now in red enemy controlled territory, your garrison will actually become locked if the enemy gets within 100 meters of it. So it's important to keep that in mind when building garrisons in enemy territory. If you build them within 100 meters of the enemy's strong point, there's a good chance they're going to be locked right away and stay locked, as the enemy likely has their own garrisons and outposts in and around the strong point, and therefore they'll have a pretty constant presence within 100 meters of your garrison. So instead, try to build them further away from the strong point and then place your outposts closer to the strong strong point as they don't become locked when an enemy is nearby. If you find an enemy garrison, you can dismantle it by holding the F key. Enemy garrisons in friendly controlled territory only take 5 seconds to dismantle, but garrisons in enemy controlled territory take 30 seconds to dismantle. In the warfare game mode, grenades don't destroy garrisons, but things like rockets, tank shells, bombing runs, satchels, and precision strikes all do. In the offensive game mode, the defending team is actually given multiple pre-built garrisons in predetermined locations throughout the map. These particular garrisons cannot be destroyed by explosives at all, and can only be dismantled by holding the F key. What's great about these garrisons is that they don't count towards your team limit of 8 garrisons. So in offensive mode, the defending team can actually have as many as 11 garrisons on the map. And plus, you can build your additional garrisons as close to them as you want, so you don't have to worry about being 200 meters away from them. But regardless of the game mode, if you lose a sector to the enemy, any garrisons you had, including the pre-built garrisons in offensive mode, will automatically be dismantled. Look, at the end of the day, having more bodies in and around the strong point than the enemy team is how you capture territory and ultimately win the game. You just won't be able to keep control of a territory if your only spawns are hundreds of meters away. And that is why outposts, and more specifically garrisons, are so incredibly critical to your team's success. Without them, you'll You'll continuously find yourself in the exact scenario I described at the beginning of this video where you have nowhere to spawn and get steamrolled by the enemy. And let's be honest, nobody wants that. Alright, now that you know all about garrisons and outposts, go check out the rest of my in-depth video guides in the playlist in the top right to continue learning how to become an absolute hell let loose chad. Thank you for watching guys, hopefully this helps, and I'll see you in the next one.